Hey, what is up DCS crew? Uh, we're back at it again today with a knife review uh, that's gonna be a little bit different from uh, stuff I normally do on the pass round uh, knives that are uh, displayed on this channel. First off, uh, big shout out to the Apex Pass Around as well as Williamson Copenhagen. If you have seen uh, my video about the unboxing from the Williamson Copenhagen line, I was expecting a knife, I got like eight. <laughs> which was crazy and if you haven't seen it uh be sure to go ahead and check that video i'll try to go ahead and put a little um a link to it uh up on the right hand side but in the meantime uh i wanted to talk a little bit about this guy right here um this is the chibs uh folder from uh williamson copenhagen um that's mikhail williamson's line um you'll notice it's a little bit used and um it did not come that way i made it that way uh wanted to talk about it uh, a little bit on how it performed as well as uh, some of the little nuances that make me really like this large folder uh, from Mikhail Williamson's line, uh, Williamson Copenhagen. This is uh, a made in China frame lock flipper uh, with D2 steel. It's a three and a half inch blade uh, running on ball bearings. Uh, it's got a reversible deep pocket uh, carry clip. Um, excuse me, a deep carry pocket clip. Blech. Uh, you know what? Let me let me just wait and give you the rest of the stuff uh, after the intro. Okay, guys, I'll see you in a few. So in reality, the, the you know, the, the, the Chibs uh, folder has been out for a little bit. I mean, Mikkel ended up giving uh, one to his friend and, and he, you know, he had been using it quite a bit, um, you know, and I, I got to tell you, uh, when I took the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the knife out of the package and I started to use it, um, it basically the tasks that I was using it for um, were as such. I, uh, I had... Um, a couple of things that I had to do outside in uh, in my garden. I had to uproot a bunch of trees and plants, and I also needed to uh, I needed I, I needed to get something that I could use while I was outside. Um, you know, cutting open uh, you know bags of, of feed of um, of weed killer of uh, you know uh, different things I can use. Uh, basically, just to go ahead and break down boxes. Uh, just do some some you know gardening. Like I said, I was cutting notches into to, to tree branches and stuff. Um, so I did about you know three or four of those, and just um, cutting through small uh, branches themselves, you know, and plants. And uh, I also needed something most importantly to be able to work with uh, gloves on. So the biggest issue with gloves is that when you have gloves and they're not extremely form fitting and they're a little bulky, especially in the fingertips, it's hard to be able to actuate uh, the knife and use the action, unless it's something that's been geared specifically for it. And uh, do I have something that has a, something that's friendly with uh, knife gloves? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I have the Spyderco Para 3. This actually has an enlarged hole and specifically has been uh, designed like that to be able to use, um, to be used, you know, not only with uh, just your hands, but with gloves. Now, um, I opted to go ahead and check this guy out out of the entire line because of the fact that it's just, you know, a standard fr uh, frame lock flipper. And it has a nice sub subdued noise when you use the flipper, by the way. That's not how it is because, you know, I've been using it. That's actually how it sounded since I got it. Now, um, you'll think that, okay, initially you have the flipper and you have this thumb hole here that you can use. But the truth is, I have yet, I cannot, I mean, you can open it this way. You know, but I cannot, the detent is is so dialed in on this knife that the only way I can open it is using the flipper. I cannot, for the life of me, use this uh, thumb hole area. For whatever reason, it's a, oh, okay, well, I guess I guess I gotta go a little bit lower and then I can go ahead and use that, okay. Well, I just learned that on camera. <laughs> because if you try to go up a little higher, um, I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's not, and I'm not putting you know pressure on the lock bar or anything like that, and it's just not letting me open it, so. Um, but this knife performed, you know, fantastic. Uh, the, the, the point on this guy, um, if I'm not mistaken, this is a, a drop point 
and it's a three and a half inch stone washed uh, D2 steel blade. Okay, um, as you can see here, it'll say the name designation Chibs, and then it will say D2 on it. Okay, so um, and there's the Williamson Copenhagen logo right here. It's actually very tastefully done. Um, one thing I really like about this is, you know, um, it's it's very obvious, uh, you know, from the packaging, it, they, they say it. And he's pretty uh, transparent about it. Um, but they mentioned that this is made in China. I've noticed that when knives are made in China, there's always a billboard on the stupid freaking knife that says made in China, which the good thing is about this one, it does not say that. And I'm glad it doesn't necessarily have to say made in China for you to, you know, uh, uh, look at it and, and be like, oh, okay, cool. It's a Chinese knife. It doesn't need to be, and it doesn't need to state it. It just needs to do its job. It doesn't matter where it's from. Um, and I think given the fact that we're going through the whole coronavirus thing here, um, I think that's a pretty smart marketing move too, uh, between us, because obviously, uh, people are going to look at this and be like, oh my God, it was, it was, you know, it wasn't in a, a, a Chinese, you know, coronavirus, uh, uh, novel coronavirus factory. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to get, you know, coronavirus if I end up using a Chinese knife. That's not the case guys, but whatever, that's. You know, go ahead and check out a lot of videos about how to prevent it. I mean, you can use basically Lysol wipes and stuff and you're good to go. But um, yeah, so I like I like this. Um, I would have liked to have seen the G, uh, like a G10 scale version that has like Rippy G10 and then this textured um, uh, handle right here. Uh, I actually really like it. Um, basically, what they're saying is that this is carbon fiber and that this is titanium. Um, I took a magnet and I don't have my Olight with me, but if I did, um, I would show you. I actually took a magnet, I went through the whole thing. Um, obviously, the, uh, the the blade was magnetized. The, um, uh, oh my gosh, the pivot screws, um, they are steel. And then the backspacer itself, itself which has some jimping on it, uh, does have uh, steel as well. So those are steel as well as the pocket clip. Um, it, it is, uh, in fact, titanium uh, for the, the frame lock portion. That's like a milled. Uh, and so I do have to tell you that it's not something that you see often uh, on titanium um, handles on flipper knives uh, or, or any knives with titanium handles uh, in, in reality. Um, you seldom see that uh, the company goes out of its way to mill the titanium. And the reason being is titanium um, when it comes to CNC machining, uh, titanium loves to eat bits. Uh, they eat bits and they, they, they eat those machines alive. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's one of those things that, um, the reason why there are so many companies that'll come out with, you know, uh, contoured, you know, smooth titanium handles, uh, and you'll see it very often is because of the fact that, you know, they're, they're trying to keep, um, the cost low because it's not easy to go ahead and machine this. And, uh, that's one definite plus for Williamson Copenhagen that I do want to mention. Um, I like the fact that they do that. And I like the fact that they, that the, the handle is split in, in, um, uh, materials between say a carbon fiber. Or I, I, it, there may be a G10 version if I'm not mistaken. And then the titanium portion for things like, you know, the, the locking mechanism or, um, just a, a nice strong portion of the, uh, uh, of the knife frame. So it doesn't feel kind of like flimsy, you know, that, that you can, uh, uh, manipulate, which by the way, it's a nice thick slab of the, the carbon fiber, the carbon fiber laminate, I mean, that you can see here. So, I mean, there is definitely no flex at all in this knife. Um, the frame lock is actually very easy to actuate. And, um, yeah, the, the, the pivot screw and the, uh, the screw with the clip or the screw next to the clip actually, which is basically, yeah, it's just a copy of the, uh, the, the pivot screw, um, is actually really easy to manipulate. Okay. And, um, for taking this down, which I am going to be doing as well. Um, I may actually incorporate into this video or have a different video altogether. Um, you're going to need two bits, uh, two sets of bits from what it looks like. It's going to be T six for the pocket clip and, um, the, the backspacer and for the other, uh, the baseline, uh, um, backspacer screw that's here and the pivot screw that's right here it's going to be a what looks like a t8 uh torx bit so um oh yeah and there's obviously the lock ball stay uh, lock bar stabilizer that is screwed in place here with a, a t6 screw so okay so you'll need one let me see here two three and t6 and then uh two and t8 on each side of course 
Okay, so um, let's take a, talk a little bit about how the knife performed. Okay, so with gloves, okay, and without, I actually use this knife, and um, I found that it works surprisingly well in the hand. It's it's actually a, a pretty large, uh, it's, it's a larger than normal folder that I'm used to. It's got a nice size blade. Um, the blade itself is three and a half inches long in uh, D2 steel, okay? So let me go ahead and see if I can position this out right and uh, pick up a few knives that I have nearby so you can kind of go ahead and gauge uh, how big the, the knife actually is. So um, we'll start first with the CJRB Centros. This is a Dylan Mallory design. This is a very slim uh, and sleek folder and also in D2 steel uh, that is from the Artisan Cutlery line. Uh, let's see here. It's the uh, USA made Kershaw Blur in BDZ1 steel. This is the Tonto one with an MXG deep carry clip, okay. As you can see, it's bigger than that. It's actually bigger than the handle than the Centros. Um, what else do I have? What else do I have? Uh, okay, little song and dance, little song and dance. And here is the Best Tech Texel. This is an Adam Purvis design, also in uh, D2. I think you can see a trend here. Smaller in the handle, smaller in the blade. And let's see here, something that's not D2. Uh, okay, here we go. Here's one you haven't seen on the channel in a while. This is my uh, Dirk Pinkerton designed Kaiser Rogue in S35VN with the, uh, also with the milled uh, titanium handle. Okay, that's also a frame lock, but much smaller. And uh, something a little bit more common, you have the Spyderco Para 3 S30V. Also American made in Golden Colorado, USA Earth, not to be confused with Golden Colorado on Jupiter with an MXG deep carry clip, all right? And um, yeah, so there you have it. That's as far as size is concerned. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty large sized folder. Um, like I said before, three and a half inch stone washed D2 uh, steel on this particular one. If I'm not mistaken, they also make a black washed version. And um, <clears throat> while it's, uh, uh, you know, behind the edge, you know, it's, it's a nice thicker blade stock with, you know, jimping, you know, everywhere you need it. You have it here in the back, you have it here in the front. Um, I actually found that with gloves, um, it was it was very good. Uh, you know, it, it felt very good in the hand. Um, I was able to get a nice grip, you know, both uh, forward and reverse. Um, the flipper acts as the, uh, uh, just to protect you from um, the actual, uh, you know, slipping onto the blade. And even if it was to slip towards the front, there's uh, this portion right here for you to be able to go ahead and, and choke up on the blade. Um, it actually, you know, worked really well when it came to um, uh, carving that notch into the, the thick tree branch so I can go ahead and place the, uh, the bird feeder and it wouldn't move, uh, allowing the birds to kind of perch onto it and... Uh, and uh, eat, eat some food, man, you know? Uh, I got a lot of cardinals that are showing up onto the backyard and, you know, I don't want my dog to uh, scare them away and make them think that there's nothing here. So, you know, we wanna keep them around because as long as they're around, you know, the bugs and stuff are away for the most part because they like to eat bugs too. So, um, yeah, so I, I went ahead and I used this all day yesterday and I gotta tell you, I used the crap out of it uh, to the point where I'm pretty sure I mangled the edge, uh, something pretty wicked. I'm gonna try and see if I can get it on the on camera and I probably can't. And again, I don't have my freaking, I don't have my Olight. But yeah, right here at the base and especially here towards the top, uh, I wanna say that I hit, uh, I mean, hit concrete and you can barely see it right there if you look right here i mean it's you know i got i got a i got a good uh a chunk uh chunk on it uh chipped let me see if i can put it towards something dark in the background maybe you can see a little bit better okay no maybe yes all right so for the most part um this knife has seen some shit. <laughs> it's been through it, and uh, which I'm I'm glad, you know, because uh, that's that's what people want to know. If you grab a, a large size knife like this, is it going to do some work, or is it going to be one of those that's got you know soft steel and just an underperformer? At the end of the day, you know, this is uh, being marketed as a nice, um, uh, you know, it's not chunky, but it fits. You know, I mean, it it fits the the hand really well. I don't exactly have small hands, and from the right under the flipper, okay, I have a full four finger grip on it and a small portion, I wanna say like a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch of it is sticking out towards the back of my hand. 
Um, and so, you know, you get a nice grip on it, even even more so, you know, when I have my gloves on, because uh, I was using uh, just standard, uh, I want to say mechanics gloves and um, in large. And yeah, no, it, it worked. It worked extremely well. Um, the jimping worked well to be able to go ahead and, and catch on here. It was it's tactile without being um, overbearing, like some folders that I've dealt with in the past. And in particular, uh, one that comes to mind is uh, the Song Terminus XR. The, the the jimping on the flipper is just ridiculous. It's just a little bit overdone. It does need to get sanded down. But right out of the box, I think that you know everything has been machined very well on this particular knife. And um, speaking of machining, there are two things I do want to go ahead and bring about. Now, um, there are companies that go ahead and provide a lanyard roll. Um, and they, they do that as well with uh, the chips. The only thing is, and, and it's something that I really like about this one, is number one, um, because of the length of the knife, um, the, the lanyard hole itself is pretty unobtrusive. So you're not going to have, you know, any issues, you know, hitting it while you are, um, you know, out there using your knife, which is great because it doesn't dig in, uh, to your hand. It doesn't create a, a hot spot. Also, what I like about it is that it's oversized and it allows you to be able to put some thicker 550 paracord, uh, not like some of these smaller, um, you know, sized lanyard holes, like, you know, this guy, I mean, look, let's be honest, that is pretty i mean if you're gonna stick a lanyard in there you know it's got to be a pretty small lanyard or you gotta kind of like you know notch it in there you know when it's uh disassembled and then once you put it together you can go ahead and uh you know use it i guess um but for this one you can clearly tell that the lanyard hole size is is nice and pronounced and it allows you to be able to just go ahead and slip something through you can you can put um even leather uh, a leather strap onto there. You can age the leather nice and dark, or you can even dye it black so it's like the knife, and then uh, slip it through and um, go ahead and uh, utilize a, uh, a lanyard, which is nice because if you have, you know, um, thick sausage hands and you, you know, you keep your hand and I mean, you keep your knife in the pocket because of the fact that it has the deep carry clip, it's going to ride nice and low. So being able to go ahead and just keep the lanyard out, you know, grab the lanyard, you know, hit the base and just take it out that way and then manipulate it, it, it probably works really, really well. I mean, obviously I don't have a lanyard on it right now, but I'm assuming it actually would work really well. Now, going back into uh, the detail about the pocket clip. Now, this is a pocket clip that I haven't seen yet from a lot of these other uh, companies. It looks like a proprietary uh, pocket clip, but what I like about it is, is something twofold. Now, um, <clears throat> I do like the fact that on both sides in the titanium, it, there have been notches that have been milled here in the base uh, for not only a screw that goes into the back and helps um, maintain the, uh, the the back spacer, okay, that you see here, but um, this is actually a space that has been like a basically your your, your parking space that's designated for uh, your uh, pocket clip and. Uh, Mikkel Williamson is, I, I, I'm assuming that he had a very large hand in just the small nuances of this design, uh, because if you can see here, okay, that, that, um, screw is just your standard, you know, screw that you would see on other parts of the folder. It's nothing, it's nothing different, but when you look at the other side, okay, and you look at the deep pocket carry, uh, deep carry pocket clip, okay, you see that screw on the inside, it's flat and it's flush with the freaking handle guys so that means that when you slip this into your pocket okay what you're basically going to see and i'm going to use this uh, hank as an example okay when you're going to slip it in here okay and it goes all the way in excuse me what you are seeing is just the the um the, the pocket clip uh, allowing you to go ahead and extend all the material from, you know, your shorts, your pants, your slacks, whatever, all the way to the very top. It's not going to catch onto, you know, a rounded screw like you get with a lot of other knives, which have great pocket clips, don't get me wrong, but when it's a deep carry clip, having a rounded uh, screw or having the screw sit proud of the handle, it kind of defeats the purpose because it keeps snagging on it and it's gonna eat your pocket, kind of like Rough G10 does. Um, <clears throat> so this not only extends the life, of the, the the pants but the fact of the matter is you have um you know a flat screw you have a nice deep carry clip that is proprietary as you can see there and um i like the fact that because of the fact that you have this uh, mill titanium it's going to be nice and tactile but it's not going to be overbearing and while there is contact between the pocket clip and the lock bar 
there is no issue whatsoever um, uh, using the, uh, the, the the frame lock to open, uh, you know, to unlock and to flip out the knife. I mean, I'm able to do this. Uh, let me see if I can do the five finger flick challenge, actually. Let's see, that's one, that's two, three. All right, come on, come on. Four. And all right, one more on the truth. There we go, and five. So for being a large frame lock flipper that's on bearings that I actually used the crap out of <laughs> uh, the, the day before and uh, the day before that, basically for the weekend, you know, you can see the gunk over here near the action. I'm gonna have to take this apart and clean it really well before I, uh, before I sharpen it. And then once I finish dropping it, send it to the next guy. Um, this is a really well-designed uh, folder. So, um, you know, I, I wanted to go ahead and, and do a video doing an up close and personal uh, look at the chips. Um, very, very nicely done. Um, you know, uh, just to kind of like another brief description of, you know, the items that you get when you pick up this knife. And I'm not going to state the pricing because that can fluctuate depending on the site you're going to pick it up from. But you can pick this up at Williamson Copenhagen's uh, uh, website directly. Um, and the, the chibs, it is, you know, as I said, it's a pocket uh, knife frame lock. Okay, carbon fiber and titanium handles. Uh, you have a 90 millimeter or a three and a half inch stone washed D2 steel blade. And uh, you, it does run on ball bearings. Uh, uh, presumably, uh, presumably it's gonna be steel bearings. I'm gonna take it down. I'm gonna go ahead and probably do a video showing uh, what, what it is inside. It does have the lock stabilizer, okay? That, that is kept with the screw here and the reversible deep, uh, deep carry pocket clip on both sides that states the name chips okay um i don't mind the name chips it's perfectly fine um i would prefer that it not state anything on there you know but i mean it is what it is uh the fact of the matter is what the you know the, the logo williamson copenhagen on one side of the blade and then uh the the name of the the knife chips and d2 uh on the blade is nice and subdued it's not too overbearing which is perfectly you know fine it's it's nice it's acceptable i like that um but it maybe could have gone without you know the uh the um the logo on the clip itself again that's just me it's perfectly acceptable the way that it is it's not a big deal um but people might assume that the name of the uh the company is chips because of the fact that it has uh the name on the pocket clip but um other than that i i i really can't find too much that i didn't like about it it, it actually felt really good in the hand you know when, when i had to use uh this this ramp here to go ahead and choke up a little bit um, you know, it actually worked really well. Um, I'd like to see a version of this in maybe a, a something that's more than a semi stainless steel, uh, more than just a tool steel, because something larger like this, um, you know, I could actually use in the kitchen if um, the, uh, you know, there was another way to open it. If this was closed and there was maybe a thumb stud here, you know, for me to be able to go ahead and open it, um, that would that would actually really help a lot considering the fact that uh, when it is uh, open like this as a flipper, uh, it's hard to use in the kitchen um, unless, you know, you're slicing apples and doing stuff like that uh, for light cutting tasks because of the fact you're really not gonna get use of the, the rear portion of the blade uh, due to the fact that the flipper here uh, keeps it from contacting uh, the ground. Um, when it's actually here, you'll notice, well, you can't really see it right now, but um, I'll see if I can get a box and show you. Um, when you have the knife and it's a flipper knife, because the flipper tab is designed in such a way, when it is completely standing on the frame and the flipper, as you notice, there is actually, uh, you know, some space between itself and the ground, which is good because if, you know, for whatever reason, um, it does fall out and it actually, uh, it falls on the, the face of the knife. Um, the edge isn't touching the ground and you're not going to mangle the edge. Plus it's D2 steel. So, um, you'd have to do quite a bit to really mangle the edge. And I know because, you know, I, I, <laughs> I did quite a bit yesterday. I want to say I maybe went through about 15, 20 boxes. I went through, you know, plastic tubing and containers. I went through, um, you know, with gardening, uh, you know, around the house and, uh, excuse me, the backyard and, uh, just, you know, carving notches and stuff into, into tree branches. So, um, I do feel the, the edge has been tested here. I'm, I'm going to have to resharpen it. Uh, once it's done, I will go ahead and post some 
um, you know, finalized review on this particular knife. But for right now, I do have to say, uh, overall, this is a, a nice little uh, first impressions uh, after using it quite a bit, a nice little walk around uh, of the knife itself so you can see what it looks like, uh, both front to back, side to side, and, um, you know, just a, a something different uh, from the Williamson Copenhagen line. Again, this is the chips folder in D2 from uh, Williamson Copenhagen. Nice stone wash blade. Very nice usable uh, blade itself. Three and a half inches uh, is, is a nice usable size, uh, you know, for, for, you know, larger or even just heavy duty tasks with a frame lock. Uh, you get a lot of blade here and because of the fact that it's not a thumb stud, uh, version instead of uh, it being a flipper, which is what it is. Um, it allows you to be able to utilize the, the flat uh, grind that's here and just go past this little hole uh, instead of catching where a thumb stud would typically catch it. So you can actually really get into, you know, some thicker slices and then kind of like just, you know, maneuver your way through. And even though it is a, uh, you know, pretty thick blade stop that st uh, stock that starts to taper towards the front, um, it actually works extremely well when you're putting in, you know, your, your knife. It stabs really well. Uh, it's a nice, you know, tip. It's not a very, very thin tip. And it allows you to be able to go ahead and, and go in and get some nice deep cuts. So um, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is my first impressions on the uh, the chips folder from uh, Williamson Copenhagen. Go ahead and check their website out. Um, Williamson Copenhagen is spelled as such. And you can also find Mikkel Williamson and Williamson Copenhagen on their website um, as well as uh, Instagram or Facebook. So uh, feel free to go ahead and check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach me on Instagram or my website, dailycarrysolutions.com, okay? So um, if you go to Daily Carry Solutions, there is that contact page that, that allows you to be able to go ahead and uh, input your information, input a message, and I'd be more than happy to go ahead and respond. Uh, I've actually responded to a couple of people recently, uh, one of them being uh, the heads of uh, Giant Mouse of all companies, uh, who was talking to me about a folder that's coming out before Blade Show that uh, I might want to know about. So, you know, not not dropping any any not to detract from uh, this particular night, but that you know, I just to kind of let you know that I do read those emails and uh, I, I do respond to them. So, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me on there or on Instagram. And uh, remember, guys, no matter what you carry, whether it's you know a front flipper, a flipper. Um, you know, something on thumb studs, you know, heavy use, light use, office carry. Just remember, if you EDC, think of DCS. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, stay around, check out some of the other videos, like this video. If you enjoy what you saw, sub so that you can be the first to go ahead and be notified of my upcoming videos, like the takedown and uh, final thoughts on this particular knife. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys next time. In the meantime, Take care. Peace.